today uh, we are going to discuss one very important uh, theoretical contribution by Colin Rowe and Fred Coeta, uh, Collage City, as it suggests, the word collage. Collage means putting things, making compositions with various things without looking at larger rationale. This book was written in 78. Uh, why this book is important, why this theoretical position is important, I think that's something we should know the background. Uh, when Aldo Rossi wrote his book, Architecture of the City, which we saw last time, uh, he spoke about uh, architecture and city relationship in a particular contextual uh, position. While this book, Collapse City, is actually looking at the modernist agendas, the, the fetish for objects, and how it is destroying the city. So this book is actually positioned against a larger project on modern architecture and modernism. Um, as against uh, Aldo Rossi, who was looking at re regionalism and region as a, as, a, as a way in which you locate the architecture and and the and its relationship with the city. There are several chapters, but I feel there are four chapters which are very important. Uh, um, uh, one of them is Utopia and Decline. The second, uh, another chapter which I thought was important was uh, Crisis of Objects and Predicament of Texture. Uh, and third chapter, uh, collusion city and politics of dry collage. So uh, uh, some of these words may be new to you, but I feel that we'll, I'll explain once we move forward. So he comes straight away on uh, uh, criticism on the way the utopias and modernity worked about on city. He believed that modernism has done uh, damage to our cities. Modernism actually was about the fetish for individual buildings, fetish for individual objects in the city. And in that process, uh, it has disintegrated uh, the social life, cultural life, theatric life, spectacle life of the city. And uh, uh, it has also, uh, you know, reduced the pluralism of the city to a single vision. And that is where he is talking about when single vision dominates the the urban planning uh, like the way uh, you can see the photograph uh, of the of the paris by corbusier where you, you you can see single vision actually determining how you should live how do you lead your life what are your relationship with the city everything is determined in a very scientific way so Colin Rove actually is looking at idea of reviving sense of pluralism and bringing certain common sense when we talk about urban planning in, in contemporary context. He uh, actually uh, puts the argument that as against a singular vision of utopia, as we've seen in previous slide, where where how science kind of determines the way in which you work around with your 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 planning road structure building blocks you know open spaces and things like that he puts his ideas that city is basically a composite you know it has a composite presence it's never made up of single idea the real life in the city is in this composition the various diverse objects various complementing contradictory objects they come together they determine the nature of subject of the city in a composite manner it means there is a diversity there is a pluralism in the city and this kind of kind of a, a complexity that is arrived over a period of time and not driven by single ideas or single vision of utopia so city of composite presence is something that he 
he uh, uh, promoted in his, his this book this book is in particular is not uh, really giving you a formula but it is giving you anecdotes it is giving you an example to prove his position that why such such historic cities uh, you know which has that sense of you know uh, diverse composition plurality uh, is so important uh, uh, in what we call it quality of life this was a one of the large scale uh, modern planning uh, projects uh, taken up in a form of housing it's a huge housing project in amsterdam uh, it's very popular uh, this was built in i think early uh, 50s and 60s uh, it was a it was a utopia it means that people live in a high density apartment block and you have a large open spaces so there are sectors there are functional segregations what all you can imagine in form of a machine you know how machine works how parts are segregated and how they are you know made to work together literally the machine functionalism was translated translated into making of city and you can see the apartments uh, uh, where your individual units are accessible from the common corridor and what you see the vertical red boxes of the staircase and there is sense of singularity there is a sense of sameness everything has you know uh, everything has engulfed uh, uh, the quality of life uh, into a very singular statement now very interestingly this project uh, uh, of course uh, could not sustain social life for many many years after initial you know beginning uh, because this kind of uh, planning uh, based on some func certain functionalism is not always the way social life works and this leads to several pathological issues several anti social uh, issues and this project was actually uh, once again taken over by the civic authorities and they redid this project and they inserted several things in this project to make this project you know again kind of a you know thrive thriving so this was visited by us a few years back uh, three years back and we saw this uh, you know project in 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 reality and they have engaged into what we call it citizen participation and you know in in making this you know place better so small scale insertions that uh, has really resulted into a kind of a you know new lease of life to this large chunk of housing project so idea is this grand utopian schemes are not necessarily uh, amounts to what we call it a quality of life this was another scheme uh, which was built in st louis uh, usa this project was again uh, to uh, uh, counter a lot of informal you know ghettoism that emerged in the city on the peripheries and perhaps they thought this is the way you can formalize the housing and give them you know quality of dwelling unit however uh, slowly this kind of formations uh, didn't allow uh, informal social interactions you know mingling of various class and this resulted into again formation of all kind of anti social activities and finally civic authority decided to pull down the entire complex now this image is basically a, a, a symbol in a way that how utopia and modernity you know and nostalgia uh, of future life you know is destroyed in no time so uh, this this event uh, of demolition of st louis housing uh, becomes a very important event and uh, it, it it became a sharp criticism on the way modernity and modern planning principle thrived on he also argued that the very idea of the contemporary planning contemporary urban thinking uh, of functionalism purity uh, clarity 
you know it brings two uh, opposite sides uh, one is that how science can build city and uh, what you see in photo is how how people build their own cities there is a there is a there is a distinct difference he uh, brought in two three examples that how purist idea of city is 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 derived from the art form especially picasso's and mondrian's painting you know they are singular they are they are they are treating it like an object an object is systematically dissected uh, uh, in various facets and created very enigmatic uh, object uh, out of another object now modern urban planning thinking also works like that it looks at one object which is machine product of modern technology and it looks at object and creates another object which replicates the other the previous object and believes that this is the way city works believes that the social life cultural life theatric life uh, spectacle life everything really works the way the machine works and and then you have this sharp paradox that emerge uh, which is what cities built by science and cities built by people so utopia and decline of of or uh, uh, and fall uh, was a, a very important phase uh, where several utopian thinker thought that perhaps they can imagine city life they can imagine uh, the new urban planning principles for a modern society uh, frank lloyd wright was one of the earlier proponent of a uh, way in which american cities could be designed the broad acre cities uh, it brought in certain sense of utopia it brought in certain sense of uh, way in which uh, every american would live uh, also similarly corbusier you know uh, brought in his own idea as we saw in our the previous example and i think both of them though they are differently contextualized they're working in a different uh, a different kind of ideological framework both of them brought in this sense of prescription that how city cities could be designed how people should live how modern society should have a, a kind of a relationship with the city and this gives a kind of a sense of utopia another uh, another uh, utopian thinking was uh, in 60s in mid 60s when a lot of uh, this metabolist group metabolist groups are the uh, are the one who thought that we need to do something radically different we need to move away from this modern city planning and do something something really radical and uh, several groups across the world uh, uh, initially uh, uh, promoted by some of the japanese uh, architects and planners and then subsequently um, uh, several groups in uk and europe uh, mainly the proponent of this new idea that city should should not be fixed city should change as and when required and they thought that metabolism is like a body metabolism body changes as per the different situation adapts city should also adapt so they came up with some of the, one of this for some of this few radical ideas uh, uh, in uh, in planning and they came up with several themes so what you see is a walking city by ron aron uh, in 64 uh, uh, walking cities and you know floating cities and thing like this so there were several themes uh, uh, worked by several architects of course none of them realized uh, Uh, this kind of uh, radical you know uh, a thought pattern but it 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 gives a very uh, very interesting way you know the colin roll looks at it that we live in townscape and we shop in futurism and we believe that 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 shopping in futurism is 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 where the quality of life you know really lies and we need to we need to take it grab it as early as possible the other chapter uh, uh, where uh, colin rove is talking about crisis of the object and predicament of texture very cleverly he is putting this crisis of the object and you can see the uh, buildings uh, 
by sketch by Corbusier, uh, clearly uh, showing that how individual objects, individual buildings really kind of, uh, you know, uh, fetishized uh, and made it prominent in the landscape and attempting to kind of uh, uh, reassure people that that's the way modernity is about. That's the way the modern life is. That's the way uh, uh, you will be living in a radically different set of uh, you know realities. So the crisis of object is actually the way the objects are imagined. We today also we architects often design objects. And predicament of texture, what he's referring to is basically the way urban fabric. We discuss the texture, the way the urban fabric forms. And we are we have a predicament of the texture. I think that the absence of texture has made a crisis of object even more severe. So this raised, I think, uh, three uh, three uh, different questions that he, he, he tried to put forth. Why are we compelled to prefer a nostalgia for the future to the, that of past? Why can't we look back and see how we live and then move forward rather than shut ourselves in, and leap into the future? And that nos it creates a sense of nostalgia. The future is, is, is where the, you know, the quality of life, you know, lies. Could the imagined ideal city reflect, allow for our psychological constitutions? Now, this is something very important. Uh, every one of us are like part of some or other cities and our psychological constitutions are in tune with the setting. And if psychological constitutions are not allowed to attune to new situation, then, then you 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 kind of uh, remain kind of isolated or autonomous. What Colin Rove is raising this fundamental question: this ideal city, how ideal city is imagined to respond to our psychological constitutions. And psychological constitutions is individual as well as group. It hints at people live in community, people live in society, people live in social circumstances. And there is a psychological constitutions of collective also. And another question that he raised, uh, which I talked about that, how this ideal city, you know, behave as a theater of memory and theater of prophecy means city should bring the sense of both idea, memory and radicalness together. City should not become just theater of memory. The theater of memory should allow author of prophecy, that is new ideas, new imagination and uh, new ways of looking at it. And uh, very interestingly, uh, he gives example of two living organisms. Uh, he talked about hedgehog. Hedgehog is a small animal, very small with 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 thrones. And he gave an example of fox. He says that hedgehog basically eats only one thing. Hedgehog has a very limited territory to defend. And when he has to defend, he withdraws in itself. But counter to that fox, basically, it's whatever comes on the way. Fox also tries new things. Fox has a larger territory. territory. He defends larger territory. And in an in a event of kind of a, 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 a defense, he doesn't withdraw. He just leaps into it. So hedgehog and fox strategies in urban planning is so important. And uh, I think what he's trying to say, theater of memory and theater of prophecy is a is a is a is an attitude towards the way planners, you know, should work like a fox. So what he uh, actually uh, began to uh, uh, put forth uh, in a very conceptual and abstract way is a bry collage. The word bry collage actually means uh, uh, you put, you take different, different ideas and you just put them together. These diverse ideas coming together is known as bry collage. Now, the one 
the agency who brings these diverse ideas and puts them together it's known as bright collage so collusion city and politics of bright collage is something that we need to understand how this bright collage can come about how cities can be assembled through this process of bright collage and who is this bright collage so moment you say bright collage it talks about politics it it talks about agency so one uh, primarily uh, issue that he talks about is a one big idea versus several small ideas and imagination i think uh, i think he is really summed up well that you need several small ideas and small imaginations to make what city is for the bright collar is an adept at the performing large number of diverse tasks he is looking at an agency uh, not hinting at the urban planner but bright collar is the one who understand this diverse task it is this diverse task task together as a one bright collar and i think that there are you know different kind of projects there are different kind of operators you need to kind of a check balance see what was constructed you need to see what was disrupted all this check balance kind of a thing is necessary in a situation of a bright collage city you know situation where you have a collusion city and he basically uh, gives a very fine example in a historical sense uh, you see the image on the left side is a city of rome and one can see a complete collusion of so many diverse ideas but i think that makes rome a very fascinating city because there are so many uh, uh, historicity coming together there are so many overlapping uh ideas narratives one can very clearly say there is absence of single idea there is absence of single narrative and that makes city uh, a city of theatrics city of spectacle and i think this collision city uh is a is a way in which one has to read through our historical example he is hinting at the understanding of history uh through a concept of bright collage and this will give you a sense of uh, sense of moving forward so in a way collage city is a way of reading history way of putting several narrative together allow each narrative to be individual and allow each narrative to be radically different from each other yet they they are together he also gave a very interesting example uh, at the end of the book he calls uh, all of you must have studied garden of varsay you know varsay in paris and the very idea of garden city you know uh, the concept of garden city is a, is a, is a actually a criticism of city because garden of city is a is a aristocratic disney world he calls it it's a you design a disney world for a, for 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 arist aristocratic personality garden city is not a not a place for common people and look at the how strong geometric order takes over the garden of versay but as opposed to that he talked about villa adriana you know uh, that was constructed uh, by hadrian you know way back uh during roman empire and he allowed construction of city with sense of disorganization or sense of many many layers it means one sees situation its context allows the growth allows the importance of new even if it's in a contradictory way so the, it 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 gives a sense of that bricolage that he talked about and this way city city becomes a, a a place for diverse ideas city becomes place for many many territories and not a one single territory like hedgehog but a territories to explore like a fox 
who explores different territories who eats different different things and the more this kind of layers of bright color that comes about the more fascinating the city becomes